Have you ever made a budget that you just cannot seem to follow no matter what? I feel like I've made probably three or four budgets in my lifetime that I throw out the window in a matter of two or three months because I am just not even close to hitting the numbers and I can't figure out why. So in today's video, I wanted to explain the top three reasons why I think a budget fails and some tips and tricks on how to fix these problems if it is what you're experiencing. So the biggest problem that I see when it comes to a budget failing is not using actual spending numbers and just estimating what it is that you spend per month. I know when I've created budgets in the past, I sit there and list out the categories that I can remember, such as mortgage, utilities, gas, phone bill, things of that nature. All those things that you can think of when you think of your expenses, the first things that pop into your mind. And then I budget, say, I think I spend about $100 a month on groceries, so I'm gonna budget $400 a month for groceries. I know my rent is X amount. I know my utilities average maybe $150 a month and so on and so forth. And I'm kind of just recalling my average spending. Now when I'm just recalling these things in terms of groceries, I know on Sundays I usually do my grocery shopping Costco and Publix or Trader Joe's and I know roughly about how much I spend on those. But I also have trips to Publix or Trader Joe's during the week for that little thing that you forgot or maybe you're short a meal or something along those lines. So there's an extra $30, an extra 16 there, an extra 25 there. And it's those little things that you don't think about. You're picturing the big expense that you know you pay at the register, but you're not thinking about the little things that add up. So when I'm factoring in my budget, I'm probably spending closer to $500 a month on food, but I've only budgeted myself 400 because I didn't go back and look at my actual spending. So what you need to do is be realistic. As a matter of fact, be precise. So average together your last three to six months of spending, whether you use a credit card, debit card, whatever your method is of paying, go back and look at your statements and average together your last three to six months of statements because this is going to produce the most normal amount of money you are spending per month on average. And of course, this is gonna be before you're making any adjustments, so this is prior to your budget, what you're spending on average. And this is a very important number because it helps you see the true cost of your living. When you're making a budget, you're not factoring in the little items, such as you're getting a haircut every three to four months, you are getting your tires changed every couple years, you have an oil change every couple months, you have Christmas gifts, birthday gifts, a bachelorette party to go to, a wedding to travel to, you've got a weekend trip planned to the beach, you've got this, that, the other thing. I drove more miles this month, so I've got gas, I've got luggage bills included with my flight, those types of things that you're just not thinking of, but they're necessary expenses in your life. So to just categorize it into, call it maybe 15 categories of gas, rent, phone, car payment, it's just not enough. And that is the number one reason why a lot of budgets fail because you're not hitting your goals because you never set a realistic budget to begin with. You have to think about your actual normal spending and then adjust your budget off of that. And you can change your spending going forward if you realize, holy cow, I'm spending $250 on restaurants, eating, I'm eating out way too much, I need to cut back on that, that's fine. But until you see your actual spending habits, you'll never be able to adjust your spending habits going forward. All right, now moving on to the second reason that budgets fail is going to be that you don't save first, you save last. And what I mean by this is the reason that you set a budget is to save, right? So you're saying, hey, I wanna save $100 a month. That's my goal. You're spending your money on everything else on your list before you're putting that $100 into your savings account. And the problem with that is say you spent in every single category that you need to, the normal categories to cover your bills, and then you've got your little bit of fun money left over, so you got 300 bucks left. When you haven't prioritized your savings and you still need $100 out of that $300 that you've got left to tuck away for savings, it's a lot easier to rationalize the things that you want to spend on and why that's more important than sticking it in savings. Such as, oh, I need a new outfit for this fancy dinner that I'm going to. Oh, I have a birthday celebration. Let me buy this fun little thing. Or 
whatever it may be, those little things it's a lot easier to spend on and then you dwindle down the money that you have left and then there's not $100 to put in your savings because you've rationalized other things being more important than the savings. And it's just how our brain works. When you're not super frugal and you need to set a budget for yourself, it's very easy to spend the money and it's very easy to convince yourself that it's worth spending money on. So the fix for this is to prioritize your savings as your number one expense for the month. This is before your rent. Your $100 savings is more important than paying your rent. It is the very first bill or expense that you're gonna pay for the month. So you get your paycheck in and you tuck away that $100, the very first thing. Now you're done. You've, you've hit your goal. You still obviously have to pay all of your normal bills and things like that, but you've hit your savings goal. And so now if you've got $200 left in the bank after you've paid all of your bills, that is free money, man. If you are smart and want to save more, you're gonna tuck that extra $200 away so you save $300 that month. But if you want to have fun, you can spend that money guilt-free because you've already saved the $100 that was your goal. So that is super important to just teach yourself, get in the habit of paying yourself first, making your savings a priority. And that way, your budget and your goals will have a much higher chance of success. And the third and final reason that I feel like budgets typically fail is because you do not factor in the big expenses. It's very easy to remember the monthly recurring expenses that you can easily check your statement for, the Netflix, the Hulu, the subscription box you pay for, your gym membership, those things that are very at the top of your mind because you do them all the time and you pay them all the time. But there's some other things in life that just happen and they either come up less frequently or annually or are a surprise. For example, maybe some type of medical bill that you weren't expecting or back to the example of, I need to get my tires replaced. None of us ever think about that. Or if you own a home, crap, my AC broke. I have a $1,200 repair that just happened at one of my rental properties, $1,200. And so those things happen and you need to be ready for those things because if you're not creating a reserve fund or a contingency fund for these big ticket items, you're going to have to go to your savings to pay for that. So everything that you've been doing for months and months and saving that $100 here and there, it's gone. It's wiped out. Because you weren't accounting for the big insurance bill that you've got at the end of the month or your property taxes that you have to pay annually or things of that nature and it's very important to be factoring in these things in your budget either set aside a itemized you know contingency fund that you have to be putting money into every single month or really sit down and do a very detailed and itemized budget that may take you time to put together and think about all of those things that you have to pay for and budget for. And for example, if property tax is one of them and your property tax is $1,500, divide it by 12. That's what you need to tuck away every single month to help cover that category. And then obviously you need to still have a reserve fund or contingency for the very unexpected items that you can't account for. So I feel that these three items are often items people don't think about when they are putting together a budget. I know when I've done it in the past, I've thrown together a budget in a matter of 20, 25 minutes, and that's just not enough time to really cover all the bases. If you want a real true budget to stick to and not break and for it to actually work and get you saving money, it may take some time for you to put the budget together and do the proper research on what your expenses are. If it takes you a month to put together the budget, so be it because then that way it'll last for years. Whereas if you take 20 minutes to put together the budget, you may not even last till the end of the month. So budgets are a super helpful thing and I do believe that they can work for people who want to follow them and to put the plan into action, but there are gonna be some things that will derail your plan if you don't think ahead and really account for those items. So I hope this helped you guys. I really hope this helps keep your budget in line and help you strategize it a little bit better so that it's an easier plan to follow and stick with. So if there's any other questions or recommendations that you have for things that helped you follow your own budget, feel free to drop it in the comments below and I will catch you guys in the next one.